Hey guys, it's Jeff from Home Renovision. Today's video, we're gonna show you how to build this gorgeous horizontal fence, select cedar, stained and finished with oil. It only took a few hours and it looks phenomenal and it gives you privacy, it gives you protection from the wind and it really frames in what's going on behind that fence which is our awesome patio project. Come and join us on this one. All right, so the secret to making a horizontal fence is how to keep it simple so that you can install it really quick and get a great look. What we did is we set these posts using the sick of what the hell was it called? Sick of fix. Sick of fix. Fix. I don't know. You can watch the video on it, how to put a fence post in. It's a great expansion foam product. Uh, here we are near the end of the year. We're trying to get this done on a relatively warm, sunny day. And for whatever reason, the, we got the Grand Prix going on behind us and the wind is blowing like a, I can't figure this out, but we got to get this project finished because I'm selling the house soon. <laughs> I don't have a choice. Winter's coming. So. We're gonna start real quick and dirty here. We're gonna get our one by six. We're using clear cedar. We've got cedar posts. These have been here anchored for a week. We're good to go. Everything's nice and level. Make sure everything's plumb and level before you get started. We've got the board lined up. Matt's gonna mark the outside corner because we're gonna do a miter joint on the outside so that when guests pull up, all they see is gorgeous perfection. All right, give it a mark and off we go to the races. Okay, now their goal here is basically to install that same board a thousand times and we're finished. We're gonna do most of this on time lapse for you. And then we'll talk about the nuances and the details. But uh, first we're gonna get the first board in and show you our system. Because once you see this, you're gonna be like, oh, I've gotta do that at my house. All right. Step one is you take your cut, you miter it, you bring both pieces with you because you can use the off cut to make sure that your corner is really nice and perfect. And just wiggle the board a hair to the, towards the corner, raise it off the wood. It's really nice if you've had time to let this stuff climatize. <laughs> so Matt, we're gonna cheat and we're gonna go a sixteenth over because it's gonna shrink just a touch. Okay, now I need you to lift it up a hair. And I'm just using the level here, folks. A bit, a bit. That's amazing how many little bits it is to move that. All right, now we're perfect. I'm gonna go like this. And I'm gonna go like this. And I'm gonna mark the other end. And here's why. You can let that fall open now. Fall open. Okay. Because we're installing this fence with PL Premium. Ha ha ha. I don't know if you saw that coming. But the truth is, PL Premium is fabulous outdoors. For connecting wood to wood, or brick to brick, or wood to brick, the stuff just works year round. It's a polyurethane adhesive, okay? So the goal here is to put this on the four x four post, press our wood into it. Well, we're actually gonna, I'm actually gonna mark this stuff here. Okay, now on camera, I'm just putting a dab mostly in the middle. And just a dab will do. And here's why we made the pencil marks, because now we're going to lift this up into place onto those pencil marks. You're going to use that wood at the end, make sure we got a bit overhang. Yep. And then we're just going to use just enough. We're going to just use galvanized brad nails to sink this on. The goal here is for the nails to hold the wood in place until the adhesive takes, takes effect. That's it. Nice and simple. And how's your overhang? Good. Are you happy with that? Yeah. All right. I know, it almost seems offensive. We're gonna just go one nail, an inch from the top, an inch from the bottom. And that's it. The rest of this entire fence is exactly that process. As long as we make our miter joints perfect of the outside and we use brad nails, the simple effect of the weather outside is going to shrink up those holes and they'll disappear. And everyone will be trying to figure out how you attach your fence. At the end of the day, it's because you understand the value of this product right here. PL Premium, gotta love it. Ugh. So when you're doing a horizontal fence like this, part of the secret is to have enough vertical supports that your boards aren't warping. In order to achieve that, you can add extra two by fours in between your four x four posts that aren't structural, 
to holding up the fence, but they, serve a function when it keeps the boards from warping. And you can put them in every two feet or every four feet or whatever you think is necessary. I'm going with a four foot gap. I'm comfortable with it. And the gap between my boards is gonna be somewhere around an eighth of an inch. I'm looking for a lot of privacy and a lot of wind control here because of the fire table and because our weather is so crappy out here in the country with all this wind. So this is going to be more of a wind breaker than anything else and not much for privacy, but you've got options. You can go with different varieties in the boards. You can go thinner at the top, have a little fun with the design. As long as you stick to outside miters, gluing the boards on with those galvanized brad nails, you're gonna be just fine. The other thing to consider is when you get near the top, you're gonna to wanna to cut all of the posts at the same height so that you can install post caps. Every four by four or six by six that you use is gonna need a post cap or it's gonna split and it's gonna cause you issues with your structure. So using post caps is important. We use Atlanta post caps because they have awesome products that are made in the United States and you can go check out the video description to go and see that. They've got solar caps for all the different sizes, 4x4, 6x6, 8x8, 12x12. That's right, even if you've got a stone post, they can have a cap for you. And they've also got some other boring stuff there as well, just for simplicity. Now, one more consideration you might want to take into effect. If you're buying your cedar and it's in a warehouse that has outdoor climate, okay, or it's fresh cut, Take into consideration where it's sitting. If it's in a nice dry environment, it's not gonna shrink anymore. But if you're buying it from a store where it's inside, then it will shrink after purchase. Or if it's fresh cut, it's gonna shrink after you buy it and install it. So, if you think your wood is wet, and you can tell sometimes just by driving a screw into it and see if the moisture discoloration effect happens, you're gonna love that. If it's wet, then just install it tight and it'll have its own gap. If you're buying dry, like in the fall, and it's in a warehouse and the relative humidity is low, then it's not gonna shrink anymore. So you gotta really be careful with this. If it's not gonna shrink, consider using tile spacers. Yeah, you can get 1 8 or 3 16 or 1 quarter inch, and you just need a handful of them because every time you set a board in the nails, you can take the spacer out and reuse it. <laughs> That's probably what we're gonna end up doing because I'm pretty sure this time of year, our cedar is completely dry from the warehouse. Matt's gonna take off for lunch now and I'm gonna build the rest of this fence on my own. So I'm just gonna plow through this and get her done and then we'll come back when it's time to put the finishing touches on to show you about these lights and other considerations to help dress it up and make it look absolutely beautiful. Here we are. This is the product that I'm choosing for the rest of my life. Now, there are other high quality oil finishes, but I love the clear satin. This stuff applies like a dream. Gives a great natural look to the product. And it should preserve it in its natural state like this for years to come. So this fence is really kind of simple. We stuck this together with brad nails and construction adhesive, right? That's like superior deck fence building because we don't have fasteners all over the face of this. And now that I'm sealing it up with oil, every one of these brad nails is not going to go black. This is the deal. You might have noticed in the uh, time lapse, I was using pencils as my spacer. It works great because the short side of a pencil is quarter inch and the wide side is half. So there's not a whole lot else to this. It's a pretty simple project. The secret to a good looking fence is all about the quality of the wood. I'm using select cedar, which is a little bit hard to find right now. <laughs> I had basically picked it up from every store in town to make enough to do the order. It's amazing. Now, I'm just going to finish oiling up the boards, which has got a UV protection that'll last about five years. When it's time for the next coat, I don't have to peel anything off. I can go right over top. That's the benefit of oil. It penetrates into the wood, and when the protection wears off, you just go give it another coat. Absolutely awesome. Okay guys, so just a real quick recap. This fence has got five posts set in that expansion foam. So we, one day we rented the auger, drilled the holes in a couple of hours, put in the foam, set the posts. That foam after two or three hours, you're good to go. You can start building on it. And I actually built all of this fence in half a day. So the reality is it, it's a one day build and another half a day to put the stain and lights on. You can do this whole project in two days. Now, if you don't want to use a select cedar like we did, I know it's a little expensive, 
but considering the gravitude of what we're doing out here in this area, I think it deserved to have some really amazing wood. You can do pressure treated or knotted cedar and you can get an amazing look. This is a privacy fence, which means that you can put it on your deck and you can make it as high as you like to have privacy from your neighbors, okay? It's a quick, easy build. This is the product I suggest you use, okay? We've done videos in the past. I'm recommending the Osmo Oil. It's from Germany, and I've got an importer bringing it in to make it available for all of our viewers in North America. Just go to the video description and check it out. We got a great deal for you as well, okay? And Matt, this is a light from Atlanta Post Caps, okay? Made in America company. They sent these up. You have two options. You can stick it on top of a post, or you can mount them to the side of your fence if you want, okay? Lots of great options in here. That's what it looks like. It's a solar light, so you don't need power, and it gives you great mood lighting for traffic coming in and out of your deck patio areas at night. Thanks, bud. Make sure you visit them. Their information's in the description below as well, and they ship all over North America. Well guys, if you like seeing us do projects like this that help your creative juices go a little bit nuts and you realize this is something you can do at home, give us a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Now if you want to see all the projects that are going on behind this fence, the patio stone, the fire pit table, the hot tub, the deck, I'm telling you all of these amazing features, we've got all videos for those. They may not be out yet, but click the link here. We'll see you again soon.